So from then, from Forbes, you then came back to Parramatta after? Yes, well, I, 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 I played a couple of years of league because there was no... The, the, I, we couldn't continue Forbes Rugby Union Club because of distance for about two or three seasons. So I had a couple of, couple of, couple of seasons of league up there. Didn't like you didn't it. get paid, did you? you no, were, no, you I, no, no, I don't think anybody else did <coughs> either. But uh, then I, I finished playing altogether. Now, when I came back to Sydney in 1957, Parramatta was going through a very similar situation as what they are at the present time. We were down, we were down on, on our backside, you might say. And we were threatened with a relegation to, to what they had then, the second division. Mm. And they asked me, would I come back and give them a hand out? So, but I was then uh, 37, 36, 36, 19. Uh, so I said I would. So I captained the first grade team in 19... 57 and I was the first grade captain coach in 1958 when I was 37 years of age. Stupid thing to do but the, the club needed the club needed me at that stage more than ever because we were So where was the club then? Amos Street wasn't bought then or was that? Oh no, not for years after. No, we were, we were still in the old Cumberland Oval uh, so was there a clubhouse, or did you drink at the Woolpack, uh, or was that...? No, we, 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 we drank at Annie's pub, down near the Gasworks Bridge at Parramatta. Jimmy Bowden's father was a shareholder in the Woolpack Hotel, so we, we had a lot of very uh, good social events. Now, the history uh, there was when I came back to Sydney in 19, early in 1957, I had to do so because my wife was terminal ill. And uh, uh, that, that shortly after that, uh, 5764, Israel passed away, and uh, my, my life had to change quite a lot. And I, I later on in 1966, I married a girl from Seattle, USA who I had met in England when I was with the Wallabies. Uh, it's a long story and I can't go into it now, but uh, it, it, it met my affiliation with the Parramatta Club. Uh, which was, uh, it, had, it had to finish because I couldn't keep on neglecting my second wife like I neglected my first wife. Because, <laughs> yeah. But I might say that uh, during that period where I retired, I then uh, played quite a part in the establishment of the Parramatta Juniors, and we started a very strong competition uh, in an area very close to Parramatta. Uh, clubs like uh, the Hills, North Mead, Marylands, West Somebody told me you started, did you start? Club Maryland, Maryland's Rugby Club? Yes. Well, I started the, I started the junior union, really. This Snowy Elliott came in and helped me out a little bit with that. But, but we, uh, we just, with, under, under the pressure put on me by the New South Wales Junior Rugby Union president, a chap by the name of John Carroll, uh, he pushed me into the calling for meetings all around Parramatta area, at schools, uh, at various places, various all clubs. And we, in the first year that we, uh, that we went canvassing ju juniors in the area, we finished up with 10 clubs. An amazing response. Uh, but of course, that was the time of the, uh, of the, of the, baby boomers 
all these kids that were doing that. Well, you're not a baby boomer, I'm a baby boomer. Yeah, you're a baby boomer. <laughs> yeah, I'm a generation before you. You're, yeah. you're, the, you're a generation they call the builders, aren't you? I don't yeah, remember. No, I forget. We call, call a lot of my age, really. But, uh, but uh, yes, well, we, we formed a very strong junior rugby union. And I was, I was president of, of that for nine years. But that, uh, that's why I more or less terminated temporarily, temporarily my time with the Parramatta Senior Club. But, uh, and, and uh, that was very rewarding because only a few years later on, we became, became the top team in, in the shoot shield. We won two competitions. With, with playing all uh, players from the Ju that came up from Parramatta Juniors, yeah. so that, that was that was wonderful for the club. So, when, when playing for Parramatta, how many first grade games did you play then? Did you know? Yes, I played 123. I'm recorded as played 123, but uh, but that covered the time in first grade from. 1950, 19, I'm sorry, 1938 to 1958, 21 years inclusive. But so, then again, seasons taken out due, because of the war, five or six years there, and seven years taken out. So you know how many grade games then? Well, that was grade games. Grade games. And, and oh, in first grade, like you, you win so Well, I, I played 123 first grade games. And uh, how many other games? Not too many other games. Because I went up pretty quick in that when I was a kid. So have we got you on the 100 board down there? I hope so. Hey? I hope so. Long <laughs> while since I've seen the 100 board. Well, that's the same too. I'm just going to uh, check too where, <laughs> where it is. Um, in those years you played, who was the best player you played with then for Paramount? Like with... Is there the Parramatta player? Yeah. Well, I, 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 the people I played with, so I'm, I'm restricted to my playing days. Yeah. Well, of course, I'd have to say Ken Carney and Len Wolf, the oh, okay. two other two front row props. Jimmy Boland, uh, the scrum half, was an excellent player. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't too many other representative players. Yeah, like again, too, in the years you watched Parramatta, I know, I know you've got Tafu Pilata now, but who would be the best the Parramatta player that you watched play? Is it Ray Price? Or oh, yeah. I, I, I think Price would stand out uh, as an exception, but uh, then that would go for the whole of rugby union. I'm not the best back or the best okay. forward, but, but I, I thought Price was a machine, uh, an, outstanding, uh, an outstanding player, and uh, a chap who never turned in a bad game. Yeah. I used to, I, I used to see him play at, at Cumberland Oval <clears throat> week after week. It, we would play, and Pricey would play his heart out. So much so that that he, he'd come into the dressing room after the match was over, plop himself down in the corner and sit there exhausted, whilst all the other players were enjoying themselves having their showers, Pricey would sit down there until he found the energy to get up out of that corner and go and have a shower. So we could say that I've never seen a player put so much effort and skill. Pricey, he, 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 was, he wasn't a, a player who played by the book. And, and you were in the first uh, Premiership League, or first side that uh, uh, played the Grand Final. Played the Grand Final. Yeah. Um, and then we've seen <coughs> the next time was uh, in uh, 1974 when the juniors started to come through. So, yeah, what was yeah. your feeling about the 74, you know, 75 Grand Finals, 84 Grand Finals, and then we won three in 97? Uh, yeah. 85 and 86, and most of them were juniors. Well, the, the fact that they've come through our juniors, because before we had, we've never had juniors to call on. Right from the time I, the, right from the club reformed in 1934, 
There's never been had any genius to draw upon except the King's School and Parramatta High School. Uh, and even the thought of, of forming juniors in Parramatta, I, I used to tell John Carroll that that's quite impossible. This, this is a rugby league area. But when we called all these meetings to form these junior clubs, I was completely wrong. There were that many kids. I mean, they were jumping out of the ground during that era, era, uh, that time of the uh, baby boomers. And we had no trouble in forming these clubs. And clubs like Dundas, Marylands, North Mead, they were filling six to eight teams in different ages. And uh, everything went so well And for the fact that uh, we got these kids who, who had progressed through the juniors and then into the Parramatta side. We got them into making a great team of Parramatta. And as uh, soon as they started coming through with your prices yeah, and, uh, oh dear. Mickey Martin and Martin. And Martin and Butch Walker and uh, Ricky Andrews and Greg Hackett. <clears throat> that kept us r really on top for the next 10 years. Did you feel a degree of satisfaction oh, having yeah. formed the juniors? Oh yes, that's always been my greatest satisfaction probably of, of, of was of forming the juniors in Parramatta and uh, we, we couldn't have done it otherwise, couldn't have survived otherwise. And it seems to me, yeah, that the juniors have dropped away now with the AFL and the soccer and all the other things too, so there's not as many, some of those clubs you've no. talked about have folded. Well you see that, those baby boomers grew up and strangely enough most of them moved out of the Parramatta district yeah. and uh, and then we got a, a, a period which is still going of immigration coming into the into the Parramatta area which has kept on getting greater and greater and the junior clubs what is left of them now find it very hard to even survive to attract them. Yeah. Um, well just moving along, having played for Paramount, I'm just sort of some quick questions now. You, know, you, know, you left the curly once the last. Oh, no, no, just <laughs> what was the best thing about playing for Paramount? You know, most people well, say camaraderie, or is it, you know, the. Well, Paramount has. You played for a long time. Paramount hasn't been the most successful team. I would say would, would lead in the, in, the, in the point score as far as team spirit, happiness cordiality, uh, call it what you like, but there's always been a very, very good spirit in, uh, in Parramatta. Even in the 50s, when we were right down, when I, I just happened to turn up again in my late 30s, there were people like uh, Phil Kernow. Now, Phil Kernow was a centre, I don't know where he came from. He, and and uh, in the first year, he was with Parramatta, he composed the Parramatta Club song. Oh, okay. And that was in 1958. Bill Kernow composed the Parramatta song, which is still being sung uh, today with varying degrees. <laughs> I was going to say that, but... <laughs> i tell you what, the, 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 the present crop of football they're much better footballers than they are singers, like. <laughs> yeah, because if they don't get the first line right, that usually throws them off the line. Well, they can make a lot of row. But the, but the point we were talking about, uh, the cordiality and the team spirit, uh, meant a lot in those days because we weren't a club the which was always on top. We'd be through our very hard times and would pull through it. Yeah. I guess that leads to, you know, you, you, what you remember about your teammates, you seem to, you've got lifelong friends who when you went away with Australia, is that the same with Parramatta too, some of the players you... Yeah, well, yeah, strangely enough, uh, I'd be the oldest one, I don't know of any other surviving member as old as I am that played with Parramatta. But as far as the Wallabies are concerned, there are still six of the 30 players uh, still alive. And there was, which would include Nick Shahady, Arthur Buchan, Terry McBride, Kevin Berg. There's one I've missed out. I'm myself. <laughs> Better off to go myself. 
There were six of us. The six of us still surviving. I am the I'm the eldest. So at the bucket, he, he, I'm certain he's the one who used to sign the cheques for all the teachers, was he? That's right. He was a big shot in the department. Of I remember education. having when I first got my first cheque. Was that right? Back and was, was yeah. signed on the bottom. That's right. Back. He was he was a marvellous. He, he was he was he tied, he's tied up with Eastwood, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. No, he started off with. Uh, well, he played with St George, he played for Renwick. I think he may have started with University, I'm not quite sure. Finished up with St George anyway. Uh, Marvellous lock forward.